Hi people, my name is Dr. Kirgin, as always, and as usual. Um, as the header of this video suggests, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how to maintain the integrity and the potency of an altar and your corresponding offering, offerings. So this is a video on how to maintain your spiritual power that you've built up through making offerings for a spirit or spirits that you work with and uh, the altars with the offerings of course on the altars or near them that you that automatically generate energy and it is through that altar through which the spirits that you work with uh, automatically manifest changes in your life on a material level so on the material plane uh, on the astral and most importantly in this specific context on the material plane i mean so I simply created a really quick makeshift altar for you guys in my living room and I'm going to walk you guys through things that you need to keep in mind at a base level. Um, hold on. Just ignore any background noises or anything like that. Okay, neighbors might have come home. Yeah, this is a makeshift altar essentially as you can tell. Base things are, I, I have are present. Candle holder, incense, the lighter. This is miscellaneous oil and uh, these are candles. And just imagine for the sake of the subject matter or topic of this video that all of these things are offerings. This for example is a phone booster for when you go outside the city. Let's just say for the sake of, um, again, for the sake of this video or for educational purposes, the spirit that you're working with is sandal phone. And you enjoy going out into the outback, into the woods, etc. All of these things would be corresponding offerings. These are snake guards. Uh, so these are automatically snake guards that you attach at your legs and as you can tell based on it they are anyone that knows what snake guards is that uh, I mean knows what they are uh, essentially they protect you against snake bites so how it works is that you simply attach these to your to your legs uh, like this like this the other way around and then they automatically protect you from for example if you're out in the jungle or in the forest and you stumble across or you step on a venomous snake and the snake ends up biting you he lunges at you or she lunges at you or it lunges at you then yeah that protects you this is a machete holder as you can tell the shape or the outline of the machete is there clear this is a gun holder or a holster sorry for a nine millimeter gun in general or a pistol and this is the um, thingy this is the manual simply for this um, this phone booster. This is simply a network signal booster for mobile phones that you attach in your car primarily and then you can simply, if you go outside the city, it, it boosts your mobile reception network by multifold. It depends on a number of factors, basic factors like the strength of the nearest access point, the provider that you're working with, etc, etc. In any case, this is your makeshift altar. All of, imagine that all of these things are offerings. You've got your base stuff there, your candles, incense holder, blah, 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 blah. Now, just imagine that you have to move, for example. You're moving to a different location, whether it be a different country or a different neighborhood. Bottom line is that you're leaving the old house including uh, all the, your temple, all the practices, everything, your entire practice as a whole. And you need to relocate. Now, how do you do so without damaging the integrity of everything that you've built up so far, energetically speaking, so magically? Okay, how do you prevent a situation in which you need to do all of this all over again? You need to buy offerings again for the spirit that you're working with, for your beloved sandal horn, in this specific example. You need to go through all the things again. You need to literally start all over again. Nah. All of that is avoidable, okay? For starters, provided that you're going to take your altar with you, your altar table or surface, you simply can wipe it off with a, a towel. Just clean it, generally speaking, the same way that you were to move furniture. So the same things, the same logic applies as you as a human being or for you as a human being. For this spirit, the same logic would apply. So the same way that you were to do things for yourself, you were to move all your furniture around, you see to it that nothing breaks, etc. You clean everything so that you can move everything in the new house or into, into your new house and everything is neat and clean. The same logic applies here. Um, that's rule number one. If you do intend on buying a new altar, you can simply wipe it off. No need to do anything of the kind. Consecration, so blessings will automatically be done by the spirit you work with or the spirits in whose name you have that altar dedicated to in this context, Sandalphon, in this example. Um, yeah, secondly, rule number two is that, and this is a very important rule. Of course, all of them are important, but especially this one. No one, and I repeat, no one touches your altar. No one is allowed to touch your altar. Okay, the second someone touches your altar or any anything on your altar, it automatically compromises the, the, the potency and everything essentially becomes nullified. 
Because what happens is that someone tainted it, essentially. If someone, a stranger, someone you don't know, even if it is someone you know, okay, even if it's a fellow occultist or magician, unless the spirit has given you specific permission, as in, yeah, that guy can touch my altar, and even then it's questionable, okay, you would have to confirm for yourself, because the spirit, even in question that you you work with might that might be in the wrong he might also have the wrong idea and he's not aware of the fact that it uh, will automatically classify as as altar or temple desecration so generally speaking rule of thumb main rule no one touches your altar no one touches the offerings on it no one touches your temple okay no one goes into your temple the temple is simply a sacred room that in which you have altars for all your spirits the likes of which for example i have could be a bedroom it could be here it could be there it could be there, whatever bottom line is no one is supposed to enter that room that's again sacred that's sacred space as well as everything in it including the altar and the offerings these are all sacred no one touches it once you've made the offerings to your spirit as in hey listen you know sandals on i've got a nice beautiful gun holster for you blah 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 blah, blah. this is in really a, a perfectly corresponding offering that aligns with what i want you to do for me i want you to keep me safe when i go on excursions into the outback when i go hunting etc etc that's it no one touches it except you you're allowed to touch it end of story and you do not remove it from the altar that's the second thing as well it's supposed to be meant on his altar for him and him alone um, obviously if you're working with a female spirit it's her etc etc you name it okay you get the gist of it now that's the second rule okay the third rule when moving is that you simply place everything neat and clean you don't have to touch anything exactly the state that they were in if they're dirty you could wipe it off with a with a clean towel etc something not neutral something clean like a wet wipe etc you name it nothing excessively okay you simply clean it up based on logic the same way that you were to clean your own stuff and then you place everything in aligning in, in boxes, not aligning, you place everything in boxes, boxes that are clean before. And like I said, the basic logic applies the same way that if you were to move, you've got boxes here, for example, the same way that you were to move, um, the same way that you were to move to a house, for example, a new house, like I said earlier, you simply, you box everything up and then you simply put it away. You tape everything shut and it just goes on. For example, on this box, I have phone booster written down, network phone booster. And you do the same thing. Okay, hold on. It's tough doing this with one hand. Stupid thing won't stay open. And then you take everything and you handle it as carefully as possible. Hold on. Oh boy, doing this with one hand is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's okay. And then you put everything normally in it. You don't throw anything. You don't do anything disrespectful. You have it like this. End of story. One offering is in a box. You close it up normally. You close it up, there you go, pop, end of story. You tape it shut, you see to it that no one else touches it but you, you set it aside, and you're done. You can put it on the ground, of course, or you can put it on any surface. It's recommended that you put it on a surface. Generally speaking, I wouldn't put my stuff on the ground unless it's stuff that that's miscellaneous, that has no value to me other than mundane value. But like offerings, generally speaking, I would definitely put them um, elsewhere. I would put them on a table, for example, like a table there. That's an example, until everything is ready to be moved. And then you simply take your box with your temple offerings, your specific spirit to your altar, uh, to the spirit, the specific altar to the spirit that you work with. You take it to your new house, you put it in a new temple, you unbox everything, you place your altar there, you place all the offerings again on it, in the same format that you're seeing here before you. And when you host a ritual for your spirit, he'll automatically consecrate the default things. that He'll make default consecration, so he'll automatically bless everything that needs to be blessed. And it's going to be imbued with his energy. And that's essentially the gist of it, honestly. That's how you basically move things easily in as flexibly as possible without, um, without compromising the integrity of it. Um, another thing, yeah, one last thing that I'm going to mention as well is that you do not, again, I repeat, you do not, when you switch up working with spirits, you do not take one spirit's um, offerings, like this for example, let's just say I, I wasn't going to work with sandal phone anymore and then all of a sudden I simply move things around, I say, hey listen, I'm not working with sandal phone anymore, I've dismissed him, I'm going to, these offerings are a waste, so I'm going to give them to someone else, to another spirit that I work with, absolutely not, what's happening is that 
Sandal Fon has already drawn all the energy from the offerings. They're already imbued with his energy. Even if he, if he takes his energy away from these offerings, which is generally speaking the case, but it depends on the situation, of course, in question, then the other spirit will not want sloppy seconds. That's what this boils down to. It's like something that someone else owned already and then you giving it to me as a gift. Generally speaking, people would not have an issue with that, but it's more complicated. If you're looking for something secondhand or something used, that's normal, but, or you have no problem with it. You know that someone else used it already. What's important is that you can still use it. It's still in a workable, normal, normally functional, functioning state. But with spirits, that's not the case. When you make an offering to them, it's over, okay? It belongs to them permanently. And you do not, under any circumstance, give, give the offerings that you use for one spirit to another spirit as sloppy seconds. Because the energy isn't there anymore. For example, if I were to offer this, this gun holster, to another spirit, it, the, spirit wouldn't, the spirit will want it, will automatically accept it. He'll see simply going along with everything. But it has no energetic value. So the spirit will lack value whatsoever. I mean, the spirit will lack energy. This is something that lifetimes ago in 2018, back when I was coming into my own in terms of prominence on a global level occult-wise, something that I learned the hard way. Oh boy, that was a nightmare, honestly, back then. But of course, now I know better. I simply didn't think things through back then, but I made that mistake and it backfired majorly to the point where I had to start all over again. I literally went from like 100 to zero and I had to work my way all the way up from zero again, all the way to 100 again. Of course, good news is that I exceeded 100 even back then. I really just broke my own records by my own standards back then. But I almost had a nervous breakdown, honestly. If it wasn't for them keeping me intact, like my beloved Lord Samuel, etc., then um, and my beloved wife Lord Sandal Fund, then yeah, nah, I would have had a nervous break. Then I would have started like, oh boy, I'm gonna end up alongside the street. Uh, they kept me mentally stable and and sane throughout the the whole ordeal, hypothetically speaking. Um, so yeah, those are things that you need to keep in mind. Okay. So to summarize again, you simply, if you're going to move, you simply do everything the way that you were to do for yourself as a person. You clean up all your furniture, your stuff, you box everything up, everything is neat and clean, you move it to a new location, you unbox everything there. That's rule number one. Rule number two is that no one touches anything that comes close to, the, to, to, to what your practice uh, entails or contains. So no touching offerings, no touching, no coming in there in your temple or your ritual space. No, none of that, none of that. No one is allowed to do any of that crap. Automatically, that automatically, it desecrates everything, like I said. It essentially spiritually taints it. It's like, it's the equivalent of, of how should I put this? It's as if someone came into your house and essentially had sex in your bed. Would you still want to sleep in your bed knowing that that happened? Exactly, no. You're like, oh boy, I need to burn the sheets, etc. That's my point. It might be an extreme example, but it's the only one, unfortunately, that I can think of. But it's a good example, nevertheless, even if I say so myself. That's what you need to keep in mind. So point two, no one touches anything in terms of offerings. None of that, nada, zip. No one touches your offerings, okay, to the spirits that you've made. No switching up offerings in between altars, none of that. Everything is fixed and set in, in set in place, and it needs to stay that way. Okay, when you box up your stuff and you take it, I strongly recommend that you write down, even if you don't want others to see it, you simply write down something in code for yourself. For example, if you work with like a Martian spirit, you simply put a logo of Mars on the box so that you know for yourself, hey, listen, don't, and, you know, for example, I work with Samael, Samael is the only Martian spirit I work with, so, you know, he is... Um, Whenever I see the Mars logo on the boxes, I know that those are his offerings in there. So, pentacles, everything you can think of. Everything, everything, everything. And that's it. And last but not least, rule number three. Rule number three is, um, like I said, okay, you, um, you don't um, make offerings that you've already used for one spirit and then offer them to another spirit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm simply going to shorten rule number three with slop, no sloppy seconds. I repeat, no sloppy seconds, okay? So that is all, guys. Bye.